Welcome, everybody, and uh, thanks so much for joining us today for today's episode of our Good Neighbor series. Uh, today's Good Neighbor value is that good neighbors live by the Spirit. And in light of that, we have our good friends, Andrew and Taylor Padgett, with us today. Welcome, guys. Hey, thanks. Glad y'all are here. Thanks for joining us for this conversation. Really excited to hear from y'all. Can you go and just introduce yourselves briefly? Just tell us a little bit about yourselves, you know, if someone's watching or listening who doesn't know you. Yeah. Um, my name's Andrew. Um, I work at uh, Island Community Church. Um, I've lived in Memphis for about four years now, and um, I live in the Berkeley neighborhood. And this is my wife. Hello, I'm Taylin, and I work at Christ Community as a dentist. I've been doing that for one year now. Went to school here in Memphis, and yeah. Awesome. She also lives in the neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Y'all live really close, really close quarters. Same house. Okay, great. Um, well, y'all, like I said, we we chose you guys um, for this week's episode. And uh, I, I want to just give y'all a chance before we really get into details. Tell us kind of what that means to you. When I say good neighbors live by the Spirit, what does that mean to y'all to live by the Spirit? Yeah, good neighbors... Um, so for us to, to live by the Spirit looks like um, just living intentionally and um, living surrendered. Mm-hmm. And so um, looks like choosing to count others is more significant than yourselves mm-hmm. and um, just look for opportunities to intentionally love our neighbors. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I yeah. think wherever we're at, whether it's at work or in our neighborhood, just yeah, they're having that intentionality. Yeah, yeah. So tell me about what's the kind of what's the connection there? You know, to living by the spirit and being intentional with the real people right around you. Like, what does that look like practically? Yeah. Um, practically, uh, living by the spirit and. Uh, lo- loving the people around you. Um, first, like you need to have the spirit. <laughs> like you, you need to yeah. to take time to be with the Lord and yeah, to know Him. That's good. And um, after you've done that work, and after you have that, then it looks like um, carving out time in your schedule mm-hmm. to uh, go on walks in your neighborhood. Mm. Um, and to just think about ways um, to love them, to pray about it, um, look for opportunities um, to have interactions with your the people around you. Yeah. Yeah, I think for me lately it's been more of like being intentional to see the people around me because mm. it's easy to get caught up in just doing your day-to-day uh, busyness and mm. kind of just slowing down and noticing those around you and being intentional to pray as you do that as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I hear you saying, you know, basically, uh, um, you're living in tune. (laughs) Mm. You're, you're kind of, you're trying to be in touch with the spirit as you're just living and working and interacting and walking or whatever that is. Do you have any specific stories about how that's played out? People you've, uh, connected with that you just know God was in? Uh, before we moved to Berkeley Air, we lived in uh, some apartments in the downtown area, and um, we lived there for about three years and really got to know our neighbors uh, who moved right across the way from us, and um, they would go outside, and they'd just be chilling outside, like smoking a cigarette or just hanging out, and, um, you know, we, we would have our plants outside. We would just, like, go outside just to be out there with them. Mm-hmm. And uh, not in a way, like, invading on our space. They, I think they genuinely liked to talk to us and things like that. And um, anyway, through through the years of, like, getting to know them, I start to, like, see patterns in their lives. Um, one of the guys was, um, he was in the Army, and he would have, like, deployments. Mm. And uh, when he would come both whenever he would come back from the deployment and whenever he would go it like a training, not, not, he was, it was like a, um, a deployment for training. So he would like go out of town and he was over other soldiers and he was pretty high ranked. 
but he felt very disrespected because mm. um, he was African American. Mm. He's literally from Africa, so he spoke with like a really uh, kind of a, a thick accent. Mm. And I would find him outside um, drunk very mm. often, crying very often. Mm. And so in those moments, um, I, th- I had like a couple of times with him where I got to just be out there and and just kind of listen to him, to pray with him. And those were like really sweet moments. He was a good friend, um, and I was glad to be there with him. Um, yeah, so it was mm. one we've had in the past. Um, but you've, it sounds like you sensed, and this is kind of where the spirit comes in, it sounds like you sensed God leading you towards him, when maybe naturally you might not know yeah. How to handle a situation like that. Just to that. meet him where he's at. Yeah. You know, and not yeah. not condemn him for where he's at, but yeah. just to, like, feel, I mean, he was in pain. Like, he was yeah. sad, yeah. you know. Um, it's mm-hmm. really important to do that. Yeah, absolutely. What about, you You said that was before y'all moved to your current neighborhood. What about since then? Yeah. Uh, right now, our, our um, current neighborhood, we've uh, been doing the, it's kind of a slow work to get to know your neighbors. And yeah. Our neighbor, Janelle, um, is our next door neighbor. She just recently got a dog, and so she's been in the yard so much. That's cool. Yeah. Which yeah. has been fun. Sweet little dog. Yeah. <laughs> so just, yeah, we've only been there a year, so it's kind of slow work, but just yeah. getting to know names and yeah, um, what they do and, yeah. Going on walks, mm-hmm. like um, proper timing. Mm-hmm. Like, you don't want to go yeah. walk super late at night. Nobody's yeah. going to be out. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we also, in October, did, like, a little fall block party kind of yeah. thing. So that was fun to get to know a good bit of our neighbors and yeah, yeah, just hang out. Yeah. yeah. And through that opportunity, our neighbors got to meet each other, which is really mm-hmm. big. Mm-hmm. Um, they had a lot of people I hadn't met before. So it was really cool. Yeah. And we do have the one neighbor right across the way who... Um, also likes to drink in the afternoons, and we'll just kind of, if he sees us working in the yard, he'll come over and talk with Andrew for a good while. <laughs> yeah, we've, we've spent many hours uh, in the yard um, just, chatting. just chatting. We've gone on walks before and um, ended up just kind of talking in the yard with him or him and his wife, and, um, you know, just had, like, pretty deep, meaningful conversations with um, some of our, uh, this neighbor. He lives directly across the street from us, and uh, he's opened up to like some church hurt he's had and things like that, which has been like honored that he would share that with me, um, you know. And but it just kind of looks like as we were available just to chat mm. in his yard. I'm sure we had things to do that evening, but um, mm. we spent the time with him instead and his wife, and got a couple of mosquito bites out of it. <laughs> um, but a deeper relationship with him yeah. and showing him that like we truly do uh, love him, want to know him more. Um, and yeah, care for him and his wife. Yeah. So funny that you used that word. Cause as you were talking, I was thinking about the word available. I think that's a word that is kind of characteristic of, of both of you. And it's what I've heard. It's kind of a summary word for what I've heard you share is, you know, there's an availability to God, right? Mm. It's, it's our ongoing relationship with him through the spirit we're available to him he can speak to us he can show us things he can give us things and we're available to those around us at the same time we're simultaneously making ourselves available and i'm curious to hear how does that how does that land on you guys and uh, is there any more you would speak into that i think it's something we still kind of need to work on because you know we have busy lives of course yeah um, Yeah, setting aside time to just be at home instead yeah. of filling up our schedules with going right. and doing things and being present, um, which, yeah, we do need to improve on. But I think, <laughs> yeah, that's something we intend to do. Yeah. Yeah, still that desire um, for sure to want to grow in that. Um, yeah. It's a, I think that's probably, if I'm honest for myself, and I would guess that a lot of people would uh, resonate with, is I love the idea of being available at all times to to the Spirit and to people around me. Mm-hmm. But I'm, I am busy, right? And my life feels full of 
things, responsibilities and commitments and even yeah. good things. Mm-hmm. Um, have y'all found like practical ways to just <laughs> cultivate like availability? I think it's like knowing what you're called to is mm-hmm. really important. Um, like every, everyone's called to different things. Mm-hmm. And I think that we're all called to love our neighbors ourselves. Yeah. That's like the second <laughs> greatest commandment. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, d- I do think we're definitely called to different degrees of relationship with different people. Like um, Mike, for instance, that I was sharing the story about the army soldier lived across the way. Mm-hmm. Like my availability to him didn't look like we were having dinner every night together, nothing like that. It was just like we were on the porch together mm-hmm. getting to know each other. And there's different degrees of relationships um, that you form. And yeah. um, I think that we felt that before, like, oh, we need to be doing more. We need to, you know, be inviting people over for dinner and things like that. Um but it's not always possible or practical for yeah, either one. Sure. Maybe God's calling us to do something else for a season or um, to live to live uh, intentionally in other ways. Um, yeah. You know? Yeah. And just not putting too heavy of a burden on ourselves and thinking that, like, it's us. Because ultimately, it's God who calls right. us. Right. And so um, taking our time to... Be in the rhythms of grace, um, <laughs> yeah. desire. Yeah, uh, really important um, thing that we would do to keep that up. Yeah. Any other just practical things y'all would share for someone who's wanting to grow in this, or you know, this sounds maybe this sounds really interesting or appealing to them. You know, what would you? What kind of practical things would you share? So personally, I, I'm very much a like calendar person. <laughs> so we even are intentional to like set it off on the calendar. Like we're not going to go out on this Saturday yeah. or we're not going to do anything. We're going to go on a walk or, you know, like make the intentional plan to be yeah. in the neighborhood or maybe try to meet up with a certain neighbor or, yes. mm-hmm. um, so I think that's really practical for me. Cause that way, you know, it's blocked off. I'm not going to schedule anything else there. Like yeah. it's going to happen. And if I didn't do that, then it would you know, probably never happen. Sure. Um, yeah. He's more, he can just meet any stranger and can, you know, <laughs> talk to them. I'm more introverted, so I have to, like, be mentally prepared yeah, for it. of course. That yeah. makes yeah. sense. Do you reckon, like, when, as you're, like, getting to know people in the neighborhood, like, um, writing down names, like, being fully present in this conversation and mm-hmm. not on your phone, but, um, like, as soon as I walk away from a, a mm-hmm. conversation with someone I like whip out my phone get on notes write down their name and yeah. everything I can remember about the yeah. conversation uh it's just it's going to mean so much more to that person if you know their name um and you've like took the time to get to know them this one person in our neighborhood walks by our house and he just has he walks his dog and I doesn't live anywhere near us, really. He probably walks a couple of miles to walk past our house. And I've gotten to know him. He's He writes novels. And wow. And it was just like, ran, and I just like was taking out my trash can one day. I yeah. made myself late for work. But I had a great <laughs> conversation <laughs> with him and got to know him, know his name. And so it's a great hmm. um, tool, our phones and modern technology. Um, hmm. Other practical things that you can do. What you've shared has been great and super helpful. I mean, I know even for me, like these are some of the things y'all have spoken to are things I've I've been wanting to work on and grow in. And so it's been really helpful. Working in your front yard. Yeah. If you have a front yard. Yeah. If you have, but it's just like, you could improve the backyard or you could and choose to work on the front yard. Yeah. People will stop by if yeah. they're walking in the neighborhood yeah. often. Yeah. Um, and if you don't have, like when we lived on the in the apartments, we just had a little patio. And so... We got some lawn chairs yeah. and we would, you know, instead of spending, you know, an hour watching TV, we would mm-hmm. just like sit outside and yeah. Dalen likes to read. So she reads and I just like sit there and twiddle <laughs> my thumbs. Yeah. <laughs> Wait for somebody to come up so yeah. you can talk to them. <laughs> we'll say it. Um, people are more likely to approach you. I noticed after we got a dog. So oh, yeah. that's a really yeah. like way good. So way everyone show. should have a dog, is what you're saying. I mean, <laughs> and a cat. Sure. A cat inside. <laughs> okay, a okay. 
But yeah, yeah, I noticed a lot of people would just come up and that was just a great conversation starter because they were like, oh, you're a cute dog and everything. So Yeah. And there's tons of really great resources out there for uh, practical living. Um, Yeah. uh, A book that we both really love is uh, Eliza Butterfield's Gospel Comes with a House Key. Pretty much everything in there is golden. Um, And Talon's, there's a couple other resources. Yeah, Um, there's lots of books out there that have practical steps that can apply in um, yeah. podcast. Yeah. yeah, if you spend brain hours working on it, <laughs> like something's going to come of it. Yeah. If you pray about it, like yeah. God God will work in your neighborhood. Yeah. Um, he yeah. will work in the people around you. Um, when I was thinking about this, this conversation about um, good neighbors live by the Spirit, like what it means to be a good neighbor, ultimately... I think, um, like, this is a, a call of, of mercy. Mm. It's like Jesus told the parable to the Good Samaritans, mm-hmm. and or the Good Samaritan, and he turned and asked the people who he told the story to, he's like, which one of these um, was a good neighbor to the man in need? And they said the one that showed him mercy. Mm-hmm. And they're, we're loving our neighbors with no strings attached, but there is a goal. Yeah. And uh, especially if that neighbor doesn't know the Lord. Yeah. And taking that time to know them because we want to share the best thing we can share with them. Yeah. Yeah. It, I feel like it sort of circles back to one of the first things you said when I asked y'all, what does it mean to you? You said it means being intentional. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it, we're sort of circling back to that, you know, being intentional with the Lord and then with those around us. And, um, mm-hmm. uh, it's really great. Super helpful, guys. I don't know. I want to just give you the chance. Is there anything else that y'all wanted to share? Any other stories or um, practical tips or anything? Get to know your delivery drivers. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's great. Uh, <laughs> delivery drivers are one of the most like hmm. dehuman, de- hmm. dehumanizing jobs, yeah. I feel like. Like you're just a person delivering a package, yeah. you know. Yeah. And um, hmm. I, I think that... Like, get another name. Yeah. Like, oh, man, I've seen, like, just really great harvest and just, like, being, hey, so-and-so, how are you yeah. doing today? And yeah. you start that conversation by just saying, hey, what's your name? Yeah. You know, and that's all it is. Yeah. And then when we see them the next time, then you're like, hey, so-and-so. Yeah. They just, like, are often blown away because they're used to being treated not yeah. very kindly. Yeah. And it's a pretty lonely job, too. Loneliness yeah. is really hard. Yeah. A lot of people are lonely. Yeah. Yeah, it reminds me of what Talon said earlier about just seeing people, mm-hmm. making sure we see people as people, yeah, uh, and listening to the Lord, listening to the Spirit about what He has for them. So good. Well, guys, thank y'all so much. Thank you for being here, joining us, for being willing to share. Thank you guys for joining us. We really hope that this conversation helps you to just better love your neighbor, and we will see you next time.